What's up, everybody? It's Andy with LightenUpAndShoot.com, and welcome to video number dos uh, for this Photoshop 101 uh, video series that I'm doing for you guys. Um, the first video I did was all about layers because I think layers are the foundation of Photoshop, and the second video is all about masks. If layers are the foundation of Photoshop, masks are pretty much the beginning building blocks that go right on top of that foundation. They work seamlessly with layers. They're extremely powerful. Uh, not only that, but they save you so much time editing, it's ridiculous. They're also another reason why I have not adopted to a Lightroom only workflow. And the best reason I think, or the best thing about uh, masks, is that they are extremely easy. Uh, they're very basic to understand, and hopefully, in total lighten up and shoot style, I'm going to do that for you guys today. Um, so, how do they work? Well, if we think of layers as those transparent sheets that we put on top of those overhead projectors, right, and we stack them on top of each other, if we think of layers like that, then a mask, you could think of it like a stencil that gets placed on each one of those layers. And that stencil is either going to reveal or conceal what is on that layer. That stencil or that mask is going to control what is visible in that layer and what is not visible. Does that make sense? Well, let me show it to you guys in real life. Maybe that'll make it a little bit easier. Um, we have this Photoshop document open here, and it consists of two layers. We have a giraffe and we have clouds. Obviously the giraffe layer is on top, so you guys should know it's the dominant layer. Uh, and since it's the dominant layer and since it's on top, guess what? It's completely blocking out the clouds, which are so cheesy, they're ridiculous. But in any case, it's not the point. We're not here for the clouds. Uh, but what I do want is for some of these clouds to shine through. The problem, like I was telling you, is that this layer, the giraffe layer is just too big. So how do I do it? Well, for you old school people, I'm sure there's a ton of you out there that were doing this. Uh, you used to be able to just come over to, the, or you can still do it, but you shouldn't do it. But uh, come to the eraser tool, click on the top layer, and just start erasing away. And guys, it works. I mean, there's no reason why it doesn't work. The problem is when you do this. So I just erased. Man, now what do I do? I have to hit Control Z and start all over again, and blah 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 blah. And I'm so, oh man, see I screwed up again. You could do this all day long, it sucks. Uh, for not only that reason, because it takes you all day long to do it, but because you're destroying pixels. You're getting rid of those original pixels by erasing them. I mean, you erase them, they're gone. Ciao. That's not good. So the real way to do it is with masks. Uh, like I told you, a mask is just a stencil that gets placed on top of that, uh, on top of that original file so we never really affect the original files just a stencil that's all we're doing so that's awesome so the way we do it is we select the layer that we want the mask to be on in this case it's the giraffe because it's on top and I go down here to my little mask button I click it and you can automatically see that the mask icon pops up it looks like a regular white background but it's not uh, this is definitely a mask and what it's telling me here is that this mask is on this layer with a giraffe and anything I do in this mask is going to directly affect the giraffe okay the reason it's white is because masks like almost everything else in Photoshop works with a grayscale white will reveal everything that is on this layer what I mean by that is whenever you see the mask and you have it painted in white or you're painting in white or you fill it with white. When it's white, it's showing this layer exactly as it is. Okay? Whenever we paint with black, we conceal whatever is on that layer. So, since there is no black here, the entire layer is shining through. But, if I want to conceal parts of this layer, I come over to my paintbrush tool, make sure my black is selected, and I paint, and I'm just going to paint here like this, just one, one line. And as soon as I let go of this paintbrush, I want you guys to look over here and see that my mask is going to update. Okay? 
And that mask is telling me, hey, you just painted this black line here, okay, which is black in the mask, but this black line is actually concealing this layer. And since I'm concealing that black, you know, that black line is concealing this layer, it's letting the bottom layer shine through. Okay? It's almost the exact same thing as erase. The difference with erase is that I'm not touching the uh, the actual original image. If I want, if I screwed up, which I did here, all I have to do is instead of painting with black, I now have to reveal the giraffe here, and I reveal with white. So I just go over to my white paint, and I go to my brush, and I just paint back the pixels exactly where they're at. And as soon as I let go of this. Uh, as soon as I stop clicking the brush, you're going to see that in the mask, it's going to update. So look now. You see? So the mask has updated, and you can see that there's a big white hole here, or big white space. And that big white space here is my giraffe. It's telling me that, hey, you, told, you painted white. You told me to reveal what's there, what's under the layer. Um, so that's pretty much it, guys. I mean, it works. Uh, just like that black will conceal white will reveal the other thing that's really cool about these masks is that you can paint with opacity so let's say I want to paint 70% opacity and I just paint and I'm painting 70% opacity and if you could see I'm gonna go over to the, the giraffe so you can see a little bit better you can see what's going on I'm only allowing 70% of the giraffe to come through okay the rest is the bottom that's trying to shine through and it only has that you know that opacity it's, it's basically like your transparency okay but what i want you guys to know okay and this might be a little bit confusing it's a little bit more advanced but i have total faith in you guys that you will understand like i explained to you guys everything that you do in photoshop is on this grayscale masks are no exception they work on a grayscale from white, which is revealing all the way, to black, which is concealing all the way. So if we are at 50% opacity, that just means we're at 50% gray. And let me show you this. I'm going to select the mask. I'm going to hold Alt down. I'm going to click on the mask, and it's going to show me the mask. So we can see here where I painted with 70% opacity. It's just the gray. Where... It's black, it's just concealing, and that's where the clouds are coming through all the way because it's concealing the giraffe, it's allowing that bottom layer to come through. The thing that I don't like about painting with opacity, and I'm going to try to show it to you guys right now on top of this, uh, I'm going to choose 30%, okay, is if I paint with 30%, you see how it's just painting a lighter gray, okay? With opacity, whenever I select opacity, it's it's still giving me the, it's giving me the transparency that I want. But if I mess up and I need to go over the area again, let me just choose a bigger brush so you guys can see what happens. If I start painting over here where there's a new area, is no problem, okay? But if I go over to an area that I was already painted, you see, I cause that overlay problem. And what happens? Let me just go back to my original image. Is you see, it's really hard to start off where you took off. And the more I add, the worse it's going to become, okay, till it eventually becomes complete black if I'm painting with black, or it'll eventually become complete white if I'm painting with white. So the way I go around that is instead of me painting with 30% opacity, I raise my opacity all the way to 100, and I choose my gray here. I just go to 30, 35, 40, 50% gray, whatever it is, uh, the opacity I want, this is 30%. And all I do is paint and you see that I have the exact same effect. The benefit being that I can paint over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. And it does not change, which is something that I don't like about the opacity brush, even though it does work for other things. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later. You need that, that multiplication factor. For some of this stuff, it just gets a little bit too complicated for me, especially when I want to start over and, or you know, continue where I left off. So when you're in masks, try to use these swatches up here instead of using the opacity.
it might be a little bit easier for you. So that's pretty much how masks work. Um, the other really cool thing about masks, and let me just get rid of this mask right here, is that you can create masks from selections. So we have, let's say we have a, we selected a square here, okay? And you see how I have the little marching ants? I can just come over to my my uh, mask school, my, uh, my mask button, and once I have my marching ants created, I click it and it creates the mask automatically, which is awesome. Uh, the other really cool thing, oh guys, let me sidetrack two seconds because this is really, really important and I'll zoom in here. Um, do you see this little square around it? It's like a little white with black. That is telling me that the mask is selected, okay? Many times, and I mean many times because I've done it many, 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 many times. If the mask is not acting right, it's probably because you don't have it selected. So just take a second or two and just look to make sure that the uh, mask is selected. Um, if you do have this original layer selected, you're destroying the original layer. So make sure that mask is selected when you're working on the masks. All right. Uh, what else? Uh, masks have a really cool dialogue. Well, this is usually over here, but whenever I'm working with something, I like to take it out. Uh, luckily, I have plenty of screen space, but um, this uh, mask dialog box is with CS4 and CS5. Very, very cool, and I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see some of the stuff. Uh, the density option is really cool, and the density is basically going to affect anything that is not white. Okay? So anything that is not white, it's going to lower the density, making it whiter, uh, just like this. Let me just show you. This is 100%, and you can see I have a black. You see in my mask here, it's black. It's black. That's the frame. It's just telling me to uh, conceal this blackness from the giraffe slayer and to please allow the clouds layer to shine through. The white is saying reveal what's in that white box and please block the clouds from shining through. When I lower my density... And I'm going to click on this mask. You can see that it's turning it grayer and grayer and grayer. See, it's all on a grayscale, guys. Um, for that to shine through. Okay. Uh, the other really cool thing is feathering. For example, if, if you don't want this edge to be that rough, and all this stuff is working on the mask's edge. This is the mask's edge. Okay. The difference between the white and the black. Okay. Not all the way out here. Uh, if I don't want this 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 edge to be so sharp, then I could just feather it. And let me zoom in so you guys can see that even better. And you can see it just starts feathering it off. It's looking really cheesy now. It's like the giraffe is staring out of heaven. I don't know. But you get my point. Um, the other really cool feature is we have mask edge. And I know I turned it all black. Don't worry. I could go over to overlay. Overlay is simply meaning that this is my mask right here. The black is normally always your mask, okay? Because the white is always, uh, it's just revealing the entire thing. So anywhere you paint with any color that's not white is technically what is going to be affected by this refined mask, okay? Um, <clears throat> and the overlay is just showing me that everything in red where the mask is, I can choose to, for it to be black or white or you know, you choose these different views uh, depending on the image that you're editing, and it'll make it easier for you to understand it, okay? Um, we have a whole bunch of options. Smooth, which is absolutely, it's not going to do absolutely anything because it, smoothing will, actually, you know what? Let me just show you guys. I'm going to paint with black here. Might as well give you guys a good tutorial now. Uh, let me go to my brush tool. And let me just paint like something a little bit more jaggedy. That's not very jaggedy, but you're going to get the point in a minute. Let me see if I can find a better brush. Maybe a little bit more jaggedy. Okay, that sucked. Um, okay, hopefully that'll work. In any case, this is now my mask edge, correct? All this little jaggedy, jaggedy, jaggedy. I go over to my mask edge, I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see, and if I go over to smooth, you're going to see that it tries to smooth it out a little bit, um, 
to try to make it less jaggedy. Okay? The feathering again will just feather the border. The contrasting will make it very, very sharp. And it's actually, if we zoom in a lot, you're going to see see how it smooths. It's, it's actually smoothed out a little bit because of my brush to try to... The contrast will make it really sharp and really detailed. The other really cool feature is this thing called Shift Edge, which is if you go to negative 100, it'll, it'll suck it in. And if you go to positive 100, it'll suck it out. Okay? Um, so really cool features to help you guys actually refine your masks even more. So, um, what else? Oh, the coolest feature and probably the feature that I'm going to be using to put these clouds in the back of the sky is this thing called color range. So I've created my mask. I go to my color range. And color range, we'll go over this in another tutorial. It's a little bit uh, technical right now, but... The point is that I can select the range of colors. In this case, I want to select my range, which is white. And that's going to create a selection for me. And that selection is going to automatically turn into a mask. So it's saving me a whole bunch of time. Um, since with this giraffe, there's so much blown sky, I know I can just click any of these corners and it's it's pretty constant. Okay, So I'm going to lower my fuzziness. I'm just going to click over here. And we'll go over this a little bit later, guys. Uh, just fix my fuzziness just a little bit. Click OK and check it out. Voila! I have a giraffe made of clouds, which is not what I want. The problem, see if you guys can figure it out before anything, is look at this. Here's the mask. What's the problem with this mask? The white is revealing. The black is concealing. And the problem is that my giraffe, I don't want my giraffe concealed. I want my giraffe revealed. And guess what happened here I don't want my sky revealed which is what the white is doing I want it concealed so what are my options luckily Adobe has thought of it for you there's this little button here called the invert button which we can click on that and if you pay attention up here okay you're gonna see that it's actually just inverting the colors whatever is black it turns it white whatever is white it turns it black okay and if you don't want to do it that way and you want to be like me and do everything with shortcuts hit control I and control I will invert any color um, but uh, let me show you what, another problem that we have if we zoom in see since I told it to select all whites with that color range look what happened to its eyes you see the eyes there's a whole bunch of blue coming through and a whole bunch of stuff it's not it's not really a good job so I can either click alt and hold this down and you're gonna see all the problem areas of your mask because see how there's black here that black is concealing which is not good. I want to reveal because that's my giraffe. So all I do is hit my brush tool and make sure I paint with white. And I just paint that white in. And I can just come in here and start painting. Uh, and painting and painting and painting. You guys get my point. And painting here. All I'm doing is I'm just polishing off this mask is basically what I'm doing. And I'm painting with white. Okay? If I was to come here and paint with gray, what, what do you think would happen? Let's try it. So we're going to paint with this 55% gray. And I'm going to paint right here just like that. What do you think is going to happen? You got it. It's 50% opacity. You see? So that's how masks work. They're a stencil. They go on top of your layer, guys. They work in a grayscale. The, the darker you paint, the more it's going to conceal that layer. The lighter you paint, the less it's going to conceal that layer. That's it. There's nothing else to it. The rest um, is pretty much, oops, look what I did. Another mistake here. It's not selected. The mask is not selected. So make sure that mask is selected. Uh, I'll go back to my white and just paint that right away. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Just keep an eye out. Uh, experiment. That's very, very important. Um if you have any questions or anything, just go ahead and post them up in the comment section. We'll get back to you as soon as possible. This is Andy with LightenUpAndShoot.com. Masks. Photoshop 101. Follow us on Twitter. Peace.